system analysis and design so last time as i explained to you that uh, it's purely depending and depending on you know the uh, designing architectural designing from requirement gathering until you create the skeleton the structure of the system but not the implementation yeah yeah and normally you know as i told you earlier that people mix up when they say designed then you know the uh they normally want to say they have implemented yeah like you know the design could be used for you know implementation but the implementation can not be used for the design hmm like then yeah okay so overall you know last time we discussed you know some uh methodologies by following some software development methodologies yeah so we discussed like a waterfall v shape and you know some the uh some their advantages disadvantages and did we complete the whole last time i can't remember now i i think we were we had some problems didn't we um uh, yeah. We can, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay yeah yes i recall now that we couldn't complete it so let us see what was left uh uh i think we were on you know the prototyping model okay yeah so normally yeah. we discuss about like a uh, uh, you know a spiral yeah a spiral is like you know a kind of waterfall you keep on going through the certain steps and you can only move to the next stage when the current stage is fully done yeah once done yeah. you you proceed with even up to the implementation but you cannot go back to change the requirements yeah you cannot change the design you cannot change the implementation so that was the waterfall and then v shape was you know a kind of water the variation of the waterfall where every like you know if when if we think that waterfall uh is used for a kind of risky project then keep on you know doing the verification and validation at every stage yeah for example if you try to start with the requirements then you verify it that whether you have you know got the you know correct and accurate and complete you know requirements or not so you know that's an additional stage you know introduced in the v shape model right so okay, yeah. so it was a kind of approach as well and then uh, there is another model prototyping model yeah the prototyping model is basically they initially you know within few tasks you know they come up with a kind of semi working proto prototype model yeah okay yeah. Anybody, like you know for example uh somebody needed a website and rather than you know getting the whole information from the customer and uh, implementing internally fully you know and they then they could deliver however in the prototyping model for example somebody came with the you know a front page design yeah the pictures layout and you know obviously the rest of the pages were not you know included but initially in order to attract the customer they come up with a prototype yeah okay, okay. yeah so depending on the market yeah the prototyping model was you know a kind of you know model as well yeah in order yeah. to you know grab the market to get the quick feedback yeah 
and then they used to you know refine the prototype and obviously based on the user satisfaction they used to go ahead with yeah okay yeah so obviously certain advantages and disadvantages in the prototype model like you know customers could see through the system requirements very quickly developers learn learn from customers and a more accurate end product was given and uh, unexpected requirements could be accommodated and flexible design like a visible science and like you know a kind of you know a handy uh, you know project given before the time but there are certain uh, you know uh, disadvantages as well that uh, tendency to abandon the structured program yeah so when they are doing the prototyping model then they have to forget the structured program because they would be doing you know the random programming the structured programming you know allows you to write the program in a smooth and very structured form like creating the modules first defining the modules and then integrating however you know this model would not support the structured programs yeah okay yeah then bad reputation could happen for quick and dirty methods obviously you know no matter if your you know the design is good looking to the customer but you know there can be major flaws behind it because it was done so quickly overall maintainability may be overlooked the customer may want a prototype delivered and you know probably you know they ask you okay you know uh, you know you have done very well and can you hand over tomorrow and you know the uh, apparently you shown your efficiency but you know uh, in actual your project would have not been completed you know more than 10 or 20 percent isn't it yeah yeah but because if you just created the face plate yeah and uh, the if the customer is asking oh yeah you are that's very good you know send me tomorrow yeah or upload for me you know tomorrow then that's a negative you know thing yeah. and weakness yeah and process yeah. may continue forever like you know once you did not get the full requirements and every time you know uh, the ex changes are expected because of the poor requirement analysis right mm, yeah so then you know when to use prototyping model when requirements are unstable or have to be clarified developer develop user interfaces it's good for user interfaces short lived demonstrations new or original development with the analysis and design portions of object oriented development so these are the some of the recommendations you use yeah when the you don't have because you have no choice of you know getting the full requirements and uh, you need a demonstration you need short lived demonstration then it is good otherwise you know for the stable and robust error free you know developments you need to follow the conventional you know models yeah yeah then there is the incremental one yeah incremental is not you know uh, uh we don't have to discuss the incremental but th that is also you know uh one kind of popular so let me just give it um, only a minute so that you know you never miss any of the important things yeah okay within the field yeah so yeah. the incremental is like you know when it starts with the normal you know steps from design to code code to integration and integration to implementation what happens once you did the system feasibility then you made the plan for the software you know 
uh, and uh, SAP plan for the software and requirements, you got the product design as well. Then, when you go into the detailed design, code, integration, implementation, and maintenance, neither you follow the waterfall, yeah, nor you know the V shape. What you need to do, you keep on implementing a small portions into each phase okay like you make a detailed design for example for one entity then code for an entity then integrate it then implement it and then think about the maintenance so if you can have a look that these bits needs to be done into an increment right okay yeah like you know if you build the wall yeah and if you if you have put the roof on as well then instead of you know completing the roof uh, roof plasters and then you know the plasters on the wall you do little plaster on the roof you do little plaster on the wall and then continue again with another portion on the plaster of the you know uh roof again and another portion on the wall as well then you know that's called the increment okay yeah maybe you can take the example in in, in any of the other thing like you know if you wanted to paint a whole car yeah then probably you in normal way the other models yeah uh, you finish one thing and then go on the other thing then probably you know in the incremental you paint half the door one half uh, half of the door of you know from the passenger side and half of the door on the driver side and do another half you know uh, on the passenger side and do another half on the driver side yeah okay yeah. so yeah I, I, I get that that's yeah. you get it yeah so it that's is. the incremental one and obviously you know there are certain advantages and disadvantage advantages into the incremental like you know they develop high risk or major functions first okay so wh what happens why they want you know let me tell you in you know uh, in one word or in one sentence whole of the advantages like you never take the risk of any part of the system which could be left for the left for any reason like you know if you have to build the house like i said you know that uh, you know you don't want to take the risk that you know for example you did the roof and due to some reason you know you couldn't work on the uh, you know walls yeah so you gave the equal you know importance to every of the stage yeah that's the main strength okay like you know you are keep on reducing the risk from every sector make sense yeah yeah okay. yeah so every sector would be done in increments yeah so that's the advantage and obviously the disadvantage is that it requires a good planning and design otherwise you know it will interrupt you that okay what are you doing you know for example you hardly did a 10 percent into the roof and you know you uh, for example uh, change the plan the working environment into the walls yeah and then maybe you know uh, uh, you required the scaffolding or whatsoever you know the logistics whatsoever yeah and uh, you need to change the setup that's the weakness isn't it yeah 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 you have to keep so changing it yeah. change the weakness but depending on the nature of the project where these things are you know not the problem but the progress into each stage is must to show yeah then for example you have a separate you know the analyst you have a separate designer yeah 
you have a separate coda yeah you have a separate theme for the you know testing yeah then if you have to utilize the whole team yeah then you know you can't wait for the analysis team to do their implementation first or oh, sorry the do their requirement analysis first and once they are finished in two days and then you you know after two days you award the work to design yeah for the design another yeah. two days and probably after eight days you know the implementation team could get some you know the uh, input for their implementation however uh, like you know if you for example if you started the analysis then give you know let's say two hours to the analysis team analysis team would further forward you know the their little portion to the design team and the design team would forward you know the requirements to the implementation team and in this way the uh, you know one of the uh, use case can be this one in order to utilize every you know sequential step make sense okay yeah yeah okay then another is the spiral model a spiral model is you know a kind of it it you know their process you know fall into the uh, kind of spiral like you know start with determine the objectives and alternatives then move uh, and evaluate the alternatives or uh, provide the prototype yeah yeah then or maybe you could start with you know uh the risk development at is any stage basically when you think about the spiral model yeah then the most important thing is they check the risk analysis and you know uh they keep on producing into the spiral okay now how they do you can understand from this you know picture that after objectives you identify the you know risk okay you identify and then resolve the risk and then go to the next level of the product then again you start with the requirement then you plan for the next phase then you determine the object objectives and alternatives and then you evaluate the alternatives and then again identify the risk and resolve the risk okay yeah so that's basically the spiral like you know that uh, if you look at the incremental one yeah the previous example i gave you that uh, that was the incremental they did the increments you know uh, in sequence but they didn't define the sequence in the incremental one but here in the spiral model they are it's a kind of incremental as well as you know in the spiral that everyone every you know process has to go through the a uh, kind of spiral and more emphasize on risk management uh, yeah okay yeah I, right? I get that yeah yeah so you can only you know rem remember and identify these you know uh, models by keeping an idea about the model like an idea i told you that they more emphasize on the risk analysis in an spiral that it means at every stage you know that they identify and try to reduce the risk right okay, so yeah. this can be a kind of comparison to the v shape model if you remember that every stage required the you know verification and validation yeah okay yeah, yeah. but yeah. the risk the spiral focuses on the risk you know uh, risk assessment that which part of the you know development has a risk yeah and that risky part needs to be done you know uh, first 
Okay. Next. Yeah. As compared to the <coughs> incremental, incremental has to implement every stage into the increments, no matter if there are any risk involved or not. Right? Yeah. Okay. In the yeah. V shape, you know, V shape says that whatever the uh, phase is, you verify and validate that you have got correct, accurate, and complete information. Right? In the spiral, it it iterates with the risk analysis that which part is risky, yeah, and mm -hmm. you need to focus on more. Yeah, okay. I like I like the sound of that one because because of the risk. Yeah, so it makes sense that you know, yeah. for example, if we obviously certain kind of incremental method is involved, yeah, the incremental development is being done yeah like here but the this model emphasizes you to look at the which one is risky right yeah, yeah. so that's the idea behind and uh, we move further there are certain you know in the definitions about the development and you know for the next level there are little bit more you know the theoretical things however these things are very clear you know that what is the project plan and test plan i think there is no need to discuss about it hello hello yeah yeah so few slides you know are you know the more detailed you know uh, about the quadrants of spiral model yeah yeah okay so yeah they are they are easy to understand you know that create a design create a re design review develop code you know and these you know things are basically you know talking about this picture okay yeah that's that's fine yeah so let me uh, move further quickly So that certain advantages and disadvantages on the spiral model. Is it okay? I should skip those. Yeah, that's fine. I can I can read to that. You you we've gone through it quite yeah. a bit so in that, in that you one. Know, as well. Like uh, provides an early indication of undefeatable risk without much cost. Like I told you that you go ahead with this and look at the risky parts and try to avoid try to reduce the risk. So that at any stage of the project, you your project should not fail. Mm. Yeah, like like I said, you know that critical high risk functions are developed first. So the, that's the whole story behind the spiral model. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Then these were basically, you know, the a kind of conventional methodologies yeah kind of conventional like they try to follow the you know a kind of approach up to there yeah for example yes if we look at the system development methods, yeah, waterfall, V shape, prototyping, incremental spiral, yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they had a kind of a, uh, uh, an approach to go through a kind of predefined methodology steps, yeah. That was an story of you know a one you know uh, school of thought right okay yeah then a new idea came in which is called the agile software development yeah they did something differently yeah 
which are the what are those differently like adaptive feature driven crystal clear dynamic software rapid application uh, scrum extreme programming rational unified unified process yeah yeah so they did you know in a kind of a different approach how different approach now let us have a look that how it is different The agile software development describes an approach to software development under which requirements and solutions evolve through the collaboration, collaborative efforts of self-organizing and cross-functional teams and their customers and users. Now, they adopted an approach by, you know, considering the preferences from either customers or developers or a collaborative organization or negotiation in between them okay like you know they are not following a model they are looking at the customer yeah they are looking at you know the developers in which way the flow of the system development could be more convenient to go ahead. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? So, yeah. So that's basically the agile. Okay. So, the so solutions evolve through the collaboration between the self organization organizing cross functional teams utilizing the appropriate practices for their context so whatever no matter for example if they say that uh, waterfall is good yeah but they are saying that oh no we are not going through the neither you know waterfall nor you know the incremental nor spiral yeah nor prototype we do you know we sit together yeah in a room and keep on working you know in parallel or okay. maybe for example if the analysis team is not available today yeah then we are implementing on our own and tomorrow the analysis team would help us you know changing the requirements and they will help us to change the code maybe at minimal may at minimal you know time however the experienced development team would already know that what they need to you know implement a portion in advance make sense yeah okay yeah, yeah. that's basically the agile that agile is you know depending on the collaboration and then you know, Agile basically is speed up or bypass one or more life cycle phases. Usually less formal and reduced scope used for time critical applications. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the Agile. And obviously, the Agile has, you know, a kind of structured system analysis and design methods. A structured analysis system and design methods, you know, uh, it's a system approach to analyze and design of information system. It's a kind of waterfall model, yeah, but they do in the system a structured way. Now, now the the proposed the names of the agile. For example, a structured system analysis and design method is, you know, the widely used application development method, yeah, but works under the agile. Okay. Yeah. Now, we don't need to go into very much detail because if we wanted to go into the detail, then we need to study the case studies and that would be too much, yeah. Okay. For the level four, 
if you understood like a conventional you know the uh, uh system development from waterfall incremental the you know prototype spiral they are more than enough and there is only the touch to these agile systems that agiles you know they are flexible and structured system analysis and design is also one of the you know agile development method and the next one is you know the ssad am and the ssid is the structured system analysis and design and they they go ahead with feasibility study investigating current system business system options requirement definition technical system options local design physical design basically these are the steps into the structured system analysis and design yeah but how okay. they will be yeah how they will be going through they will be going through a kind of agile approach yeah okay yeah and then the dynamic system development method again that's the you know agile yeah and how they uh, you know do the things uh, you know they do like do some pre project things then do some feasibility and then they explore then they engineer then they do some incremental development and this you know goes through in a kind of you know uh, a a rectangular process and the final project is posted make sense okay. yeah yeah D does it um does it go into more detail at like level 5 yes yeah okay yeah there there are the you know uh, there is one you know the unit system system development methodologies yeah okay, so yeah. we can discuss you know in the next you know in these phases and if they really mentioned yeah uh, yeah there are the like you know agile methods like scrum and extreme programming in level 5 they have asked us yeah mm. to go into the more detail however in the agile you know level 4 yeah like uh, in the system development uh, we are here in sorry yeah we were we are in the you know learning outcome one so agile and basically you know the course developer they have mixed up the things like you mm. know the prototyping and agile and waterfall they have you know done haven't done you know very well but like i gave you the hierarchy yeah that waterfall v shape prototyping they are the conventional one and the agile is a one approach and it has these kind of you know the uh, uh, types of the agile methods so ssadm structured system analysis and design and dynamic system development method they are the agile one yeah and they have certain these kind of steps you know for example if we can explore via the pictures they have to go through under these steps but the idea behind them is agile okay yeah, yeah. so yeah. we don't don't need to go into the for example the more detail the dynamic system development into, into more or you know the ssadm however it's more than enough at this stage to understand and explore the conventional one and generally the agile thing yeah okay yeah because i know that you know these these methodologies they have just listed uh, you know and they we could you know study this but 
I don't think so, you know, to waste, you know, the enough time on these. The, the initial one are, you know, doable. You can introduce into these, you know, uh, assignments. However, the agile things are used at the industry level and we, we are, you know, too far from them. Yeah? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Now, just few more bits like a system analysis. They are talking about the requirement elicitation, like how to get the requirement from the stakeholder analysis, then process design. Very simple wording and definitions, you know. Uh, here, like a process definition. Sorry, the system analysis. We already discussed, you know, the system analysis and design in detail. And what the beta, we are here in, you know, level uh, the learning outcome one, learning outcome one is still, right? So yeah. few bits like uh, what is requirement elicitation? Is it clear? Like how to extract the information? Yeah. Yeah. Elicitation is the practice of researching and discovering the requirements of a system from users, customers, and other other stakeholders. Stakeholder analysis that you analyze what the stakeholders are, yeah, and for whom you work, yeah, that's about the stakeholders. Yeah. System design yeah. process, defining architectures, modules, interfaces, and these things, yeah. So, So we just like, you know, completed the learning outcome one today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. By, you know, following our conventional, you know, system development methods and agile approach and after defining certain these definitions. Yeah. 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 So I think there shouldn't be any confusion. Uh, in those terms and that learning outcome one. Yeah, that's fine. That's that, that's great. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. Now the number two is that's just you know the thirteen slides. But after starting these thirteen slides, I would you know hand over you a big you know steady you know task, right? So this is basically be able to use system anal analysis and design techniques to recommend improvements to an existing system, right? Hello? Hello, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, it's been about 45 minutes and the system has not gone, you know, uh, down. Yes, that's a first, isn't it? Yeah, I was expecting, you know, that when I didn't get your voice, I thought it's gone, but no. Okay, good. No, I'm so st I'm still here. Yeah, good. So three says that, you know, sorry, number two. That, you know, improvements to the system, the title is not good enough. Yeah, but basically it is the, we are in the design phase is still. Okay. Like how you gather the information, how you get the business requirements, and how do you define the design process? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, uh, I really don't like the, the specification of these courses, not only this ATHE, but even in the, you know, the PSN courses, yeah, they, they randomly take the, you know, uh, keywords, yeah, and they try to fit everything into, you know, uh, into like improvements, like evaluation, and, you know, change the wording, you know, without any sense, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's, yeah, I, I, um, 
I'm doing the inform. I've well, I've almost finished the information systems um, assignment now. Yeah. And a lot of that stuff is they've put put quite a bit crammed quite a bit into it, and it's almost like they've just randomly picked words and put it, put it in there. Exactly. So you yeah. understand, you know, and you feel you know uh, annoyed. A little bit, yeah. Um, but I know that you. You you've said I'm sure you said that before with the the I'm sure you said it with the um software one that I did the first one that you said yeah. they put all sorts of bits in um yeah it is a little bit annoying but um I guess you just have to go with it don't you <laughs> yeah hello. Uh, hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, are you still there? Yeah. Okay. So the system, you know, tried to show the uh, make us a reminder that the system needs to go down. Okay. So can you see the slides? Yeah. What you can see now? Yeah. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah, I can see the screen, yeah. And is it scrolling? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so I was trying to say that, you know, the uh, learning outcome one, we discussed about the processing models, the system development models, and, you know, something about the requirement analysis and elicitation, yeah. And... Uh, Number two, they are saying like uh, do some improvements, but basically that's a design. Yeah. First okay. you design and then after the implementation, you do some improvements. So like, you know, like third one is, uh, it is saying that improve an existing system. Yeah. And in two, it is saying that recommend an improvement to the existing system. So the title is not good enough. So no. the, the way I was trying to explain that the, those who have done this, made this, you know, uh, course description, they haven't done it very well. No. Yeah. So no worries, you know, we can always, you know, uh, follow the the way how the, you know, the unit and the course or, you know, the particular subject needs to be followed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let us do some little, you know, uh, go through the learning outcome too now. How we get the information, yeah, and then do some requirement analysis using the Klein Bree's feasibility study and analysis of components. So let us, you know, start. So for obviously for information gathering, we can do it through the interviews. Yeah. And I think what are the interviews that should be very much clear. That's a general thing. That's very obvious thing, is it? Yeah. You interview someone, you should interview the customer and you obviously there would be, you know, uh, questioning and answering. Yeah. Then there, yeah. Is, a, there is an observation. Systematic dis description of events that how a system should be are when that's not about the system, but you observe the you know anything any event behavior artifacts in social setting chosen for study. Is that clear? Yeah. Observation enable the researcher to describe is the existing situations using five senses, providing written photograph of a situation under study. Right. Okay, yeah. Survey. 
survey is a list of questions you you hand over a kind of questionnaire paper and then basically you survey and then you extract the information i think you should be clear with the surveys as well yeah that's done through the questionnaires and uh, in the questionnaire there could be the open ended questions and the closed ended questions as well hmm yeah are you clear that what are the open ended questions and closed ended questions um open ended uh, no i'm not what's, what does that mean like you know when you make a survey questionnaire yeah. and uh, you give an option of uh, answers to the you know you give the answers to the you know people that how do you like this yeah for example you know agree disagree strongly disagree and oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. i understand yeah yeah, yeah that's so fine that's yeah that's basically the close ended yeah 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 and, uh, when you leave them to give their opinion to give their own answer then it becomes an open ended question yeah that's fine yeah so these are the surveys and then focus groups is a form of qualitative research in which group of people are asked their perceptions opinions beliefs attitudes towards a product service concept advertisement idea or packaging yeah so focus groups is also a kind of you know uh information gathering technique yeah right? okay yeah yeah using client briefs client briefs is a statement of problem or opportunity emphasis on clarity and brief outline of a brand's current position its marketing strategy and where it wants to to get to should always be written by a client right okay yeah so using the client brief you get some requirements as well okay feasibility study an analysis of how successfully a project can be completed it is an accounting for factors that affect it such a, such as economic technological legal and scheduling factors so we are on the new topic now after the, you know uh describing the how to get the requirements yeah so basically you know they have just given a jumping into the topics yeah however like you know these topics like uh, how to get the gather the information using interviews observation surveys focus groups and client briefs that's the full stop here right and okay. feasibility study is the an addition to the requirements gathering yeah once okay. you have requirements then you go ahead with the feasibility study so are you clear about the feasibility study yeah yeah that's fine yeah, yeah. so feasibility study helps you to go ahead with the you know हेलो
Hello. Hello. Yeah. So, it you know the connection was dropped for a while. So you are back now. Yeah. Yeah. So can you see slide number six now? Uh, yes, I can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So what I was uh, trying to explain that from the requirements, yeah. Then you do the feasibility study. Is that clear? Okay, yeah. Then, after the feasibility study, you start with the design. Yeah? And that design has to go through the process. Make sense? Okay, yeah. So, the process specification, another term, the a process specification is a method used to document, analyze, and explain the decision making logic formula used to create output data from process input data. So basically, the unit itself is trying to, you know, let the learners learn the requirements first first you know that how they need to gather the information yeah then those requirements needs to go through the feasibility study yeah is that clear yeah yeah, yeah. then practice on you know creating a design yeah by defining the design process so how that can go through that can go through the you know diagrams okay yeah yeah i just you know i have just defined you like you know the process definition data flow diagrams and entity relationship diagrams into you know particular slides however the normal system development is going through how get the requirement get its feasibility and process with the design is that clear yeah normally yeah so if you have requirements look at the requirements are they feasible then start to proceed with the design yeah is that clear yeah yeah that's clear yeah yeah so I'm sorry, you know, I'm helpless to, uh, you know, give it a very good structure, you know, via slides. But I had to define these terms, you know, in order to comply with the, you know, the provider, you know, guidance. And we had to create the lectures according to them. However, you know, uh, while classes, we try to explain our own you know the way of you know teaching that 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 is being followed according to the unit yeah yeah that's fine i, I understand yeah. yeah yeah like you know what the theory is behind every unit yeah, yeah that's it yeah. yeah okay so so i i hope you should be clear that you know after information gathering then feasibility you are ready to create a design now okay yeah right and what is the design? Uh, hello? Yes, and what is the design basically? Um, I'm not sure. Design is creating the, you know, requirements or converting the requirements into diagrams. The yeah okay this um if you go back to the um document the outcome yeah. 2 yeah you you said the outcome 2 is is labeled wrong isn't it it's supposed to be it's not actually it's the design isn't it no uh, what i said the learning outcome 2 is the design yeah but they have written that they need to recommend any improvements. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So they really, I, I I just need to drop. I just need to ignore the word improvements. 
exactly like you know in the third you know they are saying be able to develop a solution to improve an existing system right okay like you know at level four to be honest yeah you should be able to understand the how the system needs to be analyzed first yeah and the okay. unit is system analysis and design and it can't be you know the improvement in all you know jump the learning you have come two and three you know that keep on you know improving first and you haven't you know uh done any one you know uh, analysis and design yet you know yeah, what i mean okay. yeah, yeah yeah i know what you're saying yeah yeah so uh, we are going to correct it contextually yeah and we are not you know for example going to disagree with the unit content yeah but we will be studying with our own you know uh, flow and understanding yeah yeah so to make the life easy yeah okay okay so we so like i said i will be finishing you know in couple of minutes now so from after the requirements yeah and feasibility you are ready to design the system and the design is converting the requirements into the diagrams is that clear yeah yeah so yeah so the diagram not down the this point maybe in, in with a pen or you can put it in the mind yeah yeah so i should i should have access to this recording shouldn't i yes okay yeah you should have access to the recording but you know uh you can write down with a pen now if you have a pen yeah it would be you know uh, a very quick you know point uh, uh, for you to access it and you know recall do you have a pen yeah i've i've got i've got um i've got notepad so i can i can yeah. i can type it into that you can simply type that design is yeah. basically converting the requirements into diagrams converting requirements months into diagrams diagram yeah yeah uh, uh i would say further that uh converting into detailed diagrams detailed okay yeah and analysis is you know converting the requirements into diagrams yeah okay yeah so i need to uh, make it more clear in respect with respect to the analysis as well so in analysis we definitely use the diagrams yeah uh you know after getting the requirements and uh, while in the design we further write the detailed diagrams and the associations between the diagrams okay thanks for that uh, yeah okay good so now how to do this one of the diagramic diagrammatic language is let's say data flow diagrams okay another is entity relationship diagrams yeah okay yeah so remember we studied the entity relationship diagrams and you know the data flow diagrams in databases yeah so yeah most of the time obviously the databases you know analysis and design they use the entity relationship diagrams data flow diagrams you know however they those diagrams are basically the system analysis and design right okay make sense yeah so these are one kind of the diagrams like erd 
and DFD, which you can use in the design. Okay. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Now, those ERDs and uh, data flow diagrams are used. They are a kind of old diagrams or conventional diagrams. Yeah, are the basic diagrams. Yeah. Hmm. However, yeah, the latest more. These are the symbols we already discussed in the ERD. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. More detailed, you know, uh, diagrams, uh, a kind of in approach. Yeah. A current use approach is UML, Unified Modeling Language. Okay. Do you remember I told you that uh, for the designing you know, of the system, at the moment, Unified Modeling Language is also one of the most popular language used nowadays. Yes, I recall that. I remember that now. Yeah. So, now have a look that we catch up with the conclusion that in learning outcome 2, we started with information gathering. Yeah. Then after the feasibility study, we wanted to Hello. Hello. I can hear you again now. Yes. And and can you see the screen as well? Yep, I can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So by recalling the unit again, yeah, we learned with the you know models, yeah, and uh, we know that how to get the requirements simply, and then after the requirements, when you wanted to convert the requirements, you you did a kind of analysis. Yeah, is that clear? Yeah. And analysis of the system is basically the converting the requirements into the diagrams. Yeah. yeah. And the design is also using the diagrams, but creating more detail. Yeah. Like creating the association and interaction between the diagrams as well. Right? Yeah. So, how you would be creating the diagrams, you would be using the data flow diagrams, entity relationship diagrams as well. For example, you studied earlier in the databases as well. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can also do the design using UML as well. Okay. Right? Yeah. Unified modeling language, that is basically the kind of object oriented approach. Yeah. Right. So it would be best like if you are an old, you know, uh, analyst, then probably you would be using the ERD and data flow diagram. However, if you are a current analyst, then you would be using the, you know, uh, I would say like a young and, you know, uh, uh, current in a sense like you know using the current technologies then you must need to use the unified modeling language diagrams okay right. yeah so yeah. we end this session you know here and the next session we will be using you know uh, like you know discussing the uh, more on the learning learning outcome 3 and detail about the UML. Okay, yeah, I'll um, yeah speak to you next time. Thanks. Yeah. So I would let you know, uh, you know, that when uh, you know we can have a class probably.
day after tomorrow i would leave you a message and uh, yeah. will further you know complete the this unit so i hope you know the things are too much and you know mixed up but the flow is you know history you never you know get confused that what the unit specification is and how you go ahead with the purpose is very clear yeah yeah okay yeah Th right. thanks for and help. you can recall this you can recall this you know you don't need to write even you can you, you know uh, ask the questions from yourself what is the flow and uh, next time before we start you can ask me any questions if you have any you know anything unclear yeah yeah okay okay then see you next week uh, so see you in the next class maybe on wednesday or you know sunday yeah yeah okay thanks right. fine thank you bye Cheers, bye.